Right, so um, give it a wash with some clean water, um, get rid of all the debris, um, it's looking really good. So all that's left to do now is use some tea cut, that's the stuff we get in the UK. It's just a um, cutting compound that the um, car industry use, you know, spray paint booths and whatnot. So I'm sure there's all different versions of this, but um, I've got some Halfords. Um, it's tea cut and it works, it's just the clear, it's not the coloured version. It's um, just like a standard, you know, you can use it on all colour paints and whatnot. And um, the stuff really works. Um, stuff I, I actually got some um, special cutting compound actually for plastics and um, that's a lot of work um, and as you'll see in a second this just only takes five seconds and it comes up absolutely amazing so check what this stuff is only only put a little bit on your on your um, your rag and just work a small area and don't let it dry on the part you know you need to stop as soon as it starts to feel a little bit um, sticky, like you can't, it's not cutting anymore, it's starting to dry, stop and then just buff it off and then go into the next bit and uh, you go through like that. So I'll just start on this flange. I've probably got a little bit too much um, paste on now. This is the, the fun bit, that's where all the magic happens. So that's good. good. So just small circles. Just a small area starting to go off now, so I just give it a, a buff. And like magic, as you can see, it's just come up absolutely amazing. So that's it. So we just work around. Sometimes you need to give it another another little bit in another area. Um, so you just carry on, really. Um, again, all the hard work's done with your sanding and your wet and drying and all that. The time you get here, it should be a uh, Literally, this would take about 10 minutes, 10 15 minutes to finish just to cut and finish. Um, so, so, if you want to just do a little bit at a time, really work it in. And before it dries, just buff it off with a clean rag. I expect to see it starting to come alive, so I'm going to stick you on time lapse. Okay, so um, nearly there. Um, so basically, that's the um, part or cut. Um, the last thing I normally do is I just add a couple of coats of um, honey uh, honey wax, um, just to get ready for um, casting. When I start, when I do the casting, I'll do another set of videos um, and just show you how I prep the uh, molds, etc. Uh, for casting, but there'll be a, a while yet because I've got another um, three of these complete. Um, I've got another um, cavity to do and the two cores to do still. So, um, as you can see, it's come up pretty darn good. Um, that's what we basically started with. This is the this is gonna be for the top. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. That's basically um, this is going to be the the top part, and then we've got the core part for the skin, which is this one here, which is that bit there. So that's going to go that's all to form the skin. Okay, so I'm going to just stick a couple of coats of wax on this now. And then I'll make a start on the cores. 
I've got this core to do, um, which we've already started. That goes with this by the mould. And that's the top wing skin for the right hand wing. And then we've got, oh, let's have a look over here. We've got the bottom skin, which is this bit here that's all printed now, um, ready to finish. And we've got the bottom cavity part of the mould, which is printed now as well. Which is that bit there. So with the server, um, server access, etc. So yeah, so um, still quite a lot of work to do um, for the right hand wing, but we've uh, we've made a good start. So that's that's the uh, that's going to be the two wing skins, the top and bottom wing skin, uh, when we're finished. Nice and shiny. Right then, I shall uh, crack on now with the waxing. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll wax these up now and then I'm going to carry on with the core um, part for this skin. I'll get this finished and then uh, we can have a chat once this is finished and I can talk about what, any problems I've had with this part of the mould. Okay.
Okay then, so we've uh, just finished the top skin for the right hand wing. Um, all went really well. Um, there's our two parts of the finished mould. Um, so we've got our cavity, which is the bit that everyone's going to see once the model's built. And then we've got core, which is going to be the internal, the internal bit. Um, so all that's left to do now on these, um, on these parts is just um, drill out this hole to 6mm, sorry 8mm. Um, I do these, I normally print these slightly under um, and then I just run a um, reamer through it or a drill bit through it just to um, just get them nice and square and straight um, and same on this side um, and they are ready to go to uh, for casting, prep for casting. Okay, so um, just some observations um, on what I've done. Um, for those who are watching this, just um, are not really interested in the mold making side of things, but more in the finishing side of things. Um, the, the actual surface is pretty, is really beautiful. It's um, there's like a grain that's happening on the um, because the different heat, slightly different heat, and different consistency in the filament, the, the colours in the filament, you get like a almost slate effect happening. And even where there's ringing um, from the print, um, where normally you'd you'd want to sort of get get rid of it. Um, even the um, ringing. Let me make sure that's in focus. Oh. Right, that should be good there. Um, even the um, the ringing has produced some really beautiful patterns in the plastic. Um, so all the mistakes um, that add to patination on a, a sort of sculpture or a, a surface, um, really, really beautiful. I mean, even the ringing up here, um, you get like a stripe effect going on. Um, from a printing point of view, the ringing is a pain in the ass because you've got to sound it out. Um, but from a sort of aesthetics point of view, um, it really is quite beautiful. Um, and even where the, um, I don't know whether you guys see it on the video, but even where the, the infill on the inside is attaching to the plastic wall, there's a slight heat difference. And we've got the, like this lovely almost grain effect on the side that comes up here and almost follows up the, the, um, the part. So it's, yeah, this, you know, I really want to have a, a play with playing with surfaces and textures and stuff, um, more from a sculptural point of view at some point. Because um, it is really beautiful. And I never thought I'd be saying that <laughs> I found plastic beautiful, but I mean it is, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Very tactile um, surface uh, once it's polished. Um, and I just mentioned doing all sorts of different things, um, different colours, different textures. Um, yeah, it'd be a, but anyway, I, I've uh, gone off on a tangent. So um, yeah, and then on the um, the core part of the the mold, um, I haven't spent as much time finishing this, so there's still scratches and dents and whatnot in the in the faces. So all I'm really interested in in this part here yeah, is making sure ensuring that there's no nothing in the mold that's going to key the foam bit in. Yeah, so the foam bit we just want the foam bit to pop out. Um, and like I said before, because I'm relatively new to mold, you know, this is the first sort of most complicated mold I've designed from a cap perspective. Um, I could have been a little bit more generous with my um, drafting. Um, but in saying that, it's working. So um, I think I got away with a lot. Um, and when I actually prep this for, for casting and I put the release agent on here, I actually really, I, I really go to town on, on this part. I Okay, um, sorry about that, the uh, memory in the camera was full. Um, so yeah, um, where was I? Okay, so yeah, when I um, come to putting the release agent onto the core, I actually really sling it in there um, and let it build up in those, again, in the corners, so it forms form sort of nice fillets. Um, but um, I can take, that, take you through that when I come to doing it. With, um, so what's left to do is to do the top. So I've joined the, um, sorry, the bottom parts of the mold. Um, so we've got the 
cavity here and the cork here. So at the moment I've, I've just joined and glued it so I can start sanding now. So I'm not going to bore you with all the sanding and finishing now. I think I've covered most of it. Um, and we can pick up when once we're uh, ready to start casting. Um, and we can take it from there and hopefully we'll cast some beautiful wind cores that will be as good as or uh, better than hopefully the, the left hand side so um, yeah so we got one there that's still needs trimming down and finishing and that's the other one there um, that's for the bottom this is for the bottom part of the wing, so if we pop this out. Oh, I'll kind of show you quickly how it. Man, this just gets stuck in there and I can't, they don't want to come out. Come on, go on, dude. There we go. Let's pop this one out. There you go. So once we've got our two, our two skins, top and bottom, then we can um, glue them together. And I, I've been doing this inside the moulds, so I'll use. I'll use the, where are we, here we go, oh, here we are. So what I, what I do is I'll pop these back into the, um, into their respective um, cavity moulds and then once they're in there I'll um, join it and glue it using the dowels to register it, register it perfectly and let it go off and then um, they um, glue up perfectly, perfectly aligned and then once they come out it's just a case of um, trimming them up and we end up with a beautiful lightweight very strong wing so um, yeah that's where we're going next so that's um, so I'll be a while and um, keep a lookout for us and um, we'll see you soon okay thanks a bunch for watching